Hello, my name is Carl Cooper and I'm the project manager for the National Disability Navigator Resource Collaborative at the American Association on Health and Disability. And this is our presentation, Health Insurance Jeopardy Round 2, Double Jeopardy, Part 1, Intellectual Disabilities. For those of you unfamiliar with the National Disability Navigator Resource Collaborative, or NDNRC, it is the mission of the NDNRC to provide cross-disability information and support to navigators and other enrollment specialists, thereby ensuring people with disabilities receive accurate information when selecting and enrolling in insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplaces. I always say that when a consumer is looking at plans on the ACA marketplace, it is like playing a game of health insurance Jeopardy. I say that because those of you familiar with the game show know that in Jeopardy, it's not about the answer, it's about asking the right question. And consumers need to make sure they are asking the right questions about the plans being offered in order to make an informed choice. So let's play our game. For our double jeopardy categories, we are looking at some of the disabilities covered in our population specific fact sheets. And today we're looking at intellectual disabilities. So let's look at intellectual disabilities for 400. Autism spectrum disorder, cerebral palsy, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, seizures, and mental illness. In this instance, the question is, what are some common co-occurring conditions for people with intellectual disabilities? Moving on to the $800 clue, depression, anxiety, obesity, and diabetes. The question, what are some common secondary conditions people with intellectual disabilities encounter? And these last two clues are important because it shows that people with intellectual disabilities have issues that go beyond just their disability itself. And many times when you're looking at plans, you're going to have to take all of these different issues into consideration and make sure that they are provided for, that they'll be able to see the providers they need to and seek the treatment that they'll, be, they'll need to for these other conditions. For the $1,200 clue, more than 80% of US medical school students report receiving no clinical training regarding people with intellectual disabilities. In this instance, the question is, who are the physicians they see and are they in the network of providers? And in this instance, you really need to look at the fact that these are people that many times do not have a lot of training around people with intellectual disabilities. As a result, this is going to be a population that is going to usually wanna try and stick with the doctors that they've had before because they are people that have been associated with them and that they have a comfort level with. As a result, many times it's gonna be very important to check the network of providers to make sure that the physician that this particular individual is used to seeing is in that network so that they can continue to go to see that doctor that they have the comfort level with. Moving on to the $1,600 clue, physical, occupational, behavioral, and speech. In this instance, the question is, what are some common therapies used by people with intellectual disabilities? And moving on, the $2,000 clue, therapies that help with basic social skills, fine motor skills to help dress themselves, how to administer his or her own medication safely, and how to use a phone. In this instance, the question is, what are examples of habilitation therapies for people with intellectual disabilities? And these are habilitation therapies because they're skills that they have they never had, whereas opposed to rehabilitation is something that you had and you've lost and you're now trying to regain that particular skill. The problem is many times insurance companies deal with rehabilitation and habilitation therapies very differently. If you want more information on this, I'd encourage you to check out our other YouTube video on rehabilitation and habilitation therapies. If you haven't already seen it, be sure to check out round one of our Health Insurance Jeopardy presentation, where we address topics such as prescription drugs, medical devices, rehabilitation and habilitation therapies, Medicaid eligibility, the summary of benefits and coverage, and mental health. Those can be found on our YouTube channel at the link provided on this slide. If you're interested in finding out more about the NDNRC, you can check out our website, www.nationaldisabilitynavigator.org, you can also find my contact information on this slide. Feel free to reach out to us if you have questions as you're assisting an individual with a disability enroll in health insurance. Also, please subscribe to our channel to get more helpful videos like this one. And if you're interested in learning about the other disabilities listed, be sure to check out the links in the description below to access those videos. Thank you.